And now, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. In a moment, Act One of The Lunatic Hour, starring George Matthews, and written especially for Suspense by John Robert. <laughs> No good for a man to outlive his guilt. No good. Who knows better than me? Tom Morley. Crazy old Tom, they call me. Coyote. There's more of them critters out on our prairie here than there is people in San Ventura. San Ventura, population 638. Trains stop in San Ventura only when we signal them. When I signal them, I'm station master here. This time each year, I'm wanted by trains. By one in particular. Yes, crazy Tom always haunted, all right. Because that's what grief and guilt will do to a man. In fact, don't I see a devil risen before me now? Hear him talking to me? So I'm a conjuration, am I? Answer me, Tom. You are only that. I imagine you. And my voice? I'm only hearing myself. <laughs> You're in bad shape, Tom. Put out your foot. My foot? So I can give you proof that you see what you see. With all my weight. Ow, ow, ow my foot. Now, am I as real to you as the ache in your foot? I can't stand anymore. We have things to recall together, Tom Morley. So what things? Things like you murdering me. Have you forgotten the old 11.55? How could I ever forget it? And say my name. Say it! Gully Reeves, engineer at the 11.55. You see, I do remember. The rail was split at Jericho Bend, but you didn't single me to stop. No. They found Gully Reeves in a hollow of Jericho Bend with his hand on the throttle still. Still engineer the train, dead as I was. The Van Hale fell into the hollow. But the other car stood hard on the tracks. Every life spared. It was bad, Gully Reeves, but not as bad as it could have been. It was a lucky night for others, but a black night for me. I died when no man should. When no man should, Gully? On the eve of the day I was to marry. Oh, Jenny. Yes, Jenny. A man can't offer his corpse in marriage. You cost me more than life that black night, Tom. What payment are you here to take from me? Live through this week and see, old man. Then you'll know your punishment. Only a devil's apparition can crush your foot. Gully Reeves, whose death was on my hands. Gully Reeves had come back from the earth. And I had his promise now. By the end of the week, he'd square accounts with me. I'd know my punishment. I had the devil's own promise for that. Live through the week and see. Huh? Huh? Ah! Ah, open up! It was Will, my stepson, bringing me coffee like every night. <laughs> Why the locked door, Pop? Against prowlers. Here? <laughs> That's a joke. You know, the only prowlers around here are stray dogs and coyotes. Well, there's some coffee for you. Oh, I'm going home to bed now. Uh, Will, wait. Hmm? Help me off with my shoe. The, the left shoe. Oh. Well, the foot swelled up again. No, 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 go easy. I have the devil's own pain in my toes. Okay. Wow, it certainly is swollen. Pop, take your sock off and let's see. Mm. That foot didn't only puff up. No? The toes are blue. Pop, that big one looks crushed. A crate fall on it? It wasn't a crate. Well, what was it? It was Gully Reeves. Gully Reeves? He spoke to me. Uh, he spoke to you and invited you out of your mind. Well, oh, son, I swear. I saw him like I see but you. Don't call me son. Not when you act and talk like an old fool. I murdered him, he said. At a time when no man should die. Pop. He had a girl. Jenny promised to him. 
Huh? There's a telegraph message coming in. Well, Pop, if you're up to it... Uh, take it for me, Will, huh? Okay. It says the 1155's due by... In one minute now. It's right on time. Yeah, it's on the button. Oh, wait a minute. Pop, move over. Huh? Make room in the dark for a relative. Make room? There's more to the message. The last half says, I'll be riding the van again. Sign, Gully Reef. that night. Shut up, Pop. They found him in a hollow, sealed in his wrecked van, with his hand dead on the throttle. Pop, shut up! Shut up! It's gone. You know something, Pop? Yes, Will. You're like something contagious. Stick close to you nights and I'll be just as crazy as you. Sorry, son. Just then, with the 1155 clearing the station. You know what crazy thought flashed through my mind? This is the anniversary week of the wreck of the old 1155. It would really be one for the books if the... Ghost of Gully Reeves rode the 1155 into another wreck. <laughs> How about that, Pop? I had the same thought. to the San Ventura Cemetery. I held my lantern over a headstone. Here lies Gully Reeves. Only Gully Reeves wasn't lying there. He was risen from the dead. There was every sign that he was risen from the dead. An open grave and an open coffin lid. I could see by the shine of my lantern. Gully wasn't in his coffin. And then I could hear his ghost laughing. You came to see with your own eyes whether I was in my coffin or not. That's smart of you, Tom. Gully? On the path. Plain in the light of your lantern. See me? Yes. Live through the week and see. And since you're here to visit the dead, why not take yourself over to Jenny? To Jenny? Five graves from mine. Count five graves from here. Go on. Ask Jenny to tell you how she died. I counted five graves from gullies and stood there with my mind in the dark and my eyes to the ground. An open grave. This one, too. But the lid of the coffin was closed. <laughs> closed, but opening before my eyes. I watched a specter in white rise up. Tom Morley? Are you Tom Morley? I am. Golly sent you to me? Yes. To ask how you died. He said, How did you die? In my wedding gown. I was fitting it to wear for Gully when the news came that night. It was a tragic hour. A black, tragic hour. See my gown, Tom? Your gown? 
my bridal gown. I wore it to my grave for Gully to admire. Isn't it beautiful? Then the girl, Jenny herself, back from the grave. My neglect buried Jenny. I sent her to doom instead of her wedding. In a gown she was proud of, even in death. And Gully, well, he kept his promise as I knew he'd do. Rode the 1155 for the anniversary week. And always with a message for me at 1154. Just one minute before... I'll ride the van of the 1155, Tom Hawley. Look to the rail at Jericho Bend. Look to the rail. Look to the rail. Gully meant to ride the 1155 to his death again. Station master at San Ventura. Operator, a terrible thing. The 1155. <laughs> Operator. Uh, Operator. Uh, Will? What's got you going now? Uh, Will, you telephone for me. I, I, I can't make myself understood. Okay, give me the phone. What am I to say? Say? Outside what you saw. The 1155 wrecked. Oh, come off it, Pop. Now, who'd be interested in hearing that? Who'd be interested? Well, do you know what you're saying? Pop, you're a maniac. You worked hard at becoming one, and you finally made it. What's all this malarkey about the 1155? Why, why, it's direct. Gully Reeves, a ghost engineer on a ghost train. Sure, Pop, sure. Look, the wall clock's behind you. You see what time it says? 11.54... Only 11.54. Right. Here's the 11.55 now. Right on time. You're 11.55, Pop. Crashed in your head. A saner mind than mine. I needed a saner mind than mine to take me in hand, to show me what was real and what was imagined. Mr. McHale, the town supervisor, I pleaded with him and he came back to San Ventura Cemetery. This hallucination, Tom, the engineer Gully Reeves, risen from the grave, and the late Jenny Ives standing up in her coffin. How long has all that been bothering you? Ten years, Mr. McHale, since the day Gully was killed. Mm-hmm. And the spirit visitations? Oh, only these few nights this week, this anniversary week. Anniversary? The wreck was ten years ago this week. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, which are the two graves? Over here is Gully Reeves. This grave. This grave? It says Gully Reeves on the gravestone. I'll hold the lantern to it. Do we see different things, Mr. McHale? Well, I... I see an open grave. An open grave and an open coffin. Jenny is five graves from this, Mr. McHale. Count five graves. Five. I... I've counted five. I'm an old man and I've lost my reason... But not you, Mr. McHale. You're the slickest mine in San Ventura. The town supervisor. Hallucinations, yes. I'm I'm sick with them. Sick with grief and guilt. But not you. Tell me we see different things. Maybe... Maybe not, Tom. Maybe we see the same things. This grave now, Mr. McHale. It's right and proper. Like a grave must be, so a soul can rest. No, Tom, I... 
I can't say that it is. You can't? What do you see? Well, a grave as unnatural as the first. And you have hallucinations, too. The grave is open and the coffin empty, like the first. You hear it, too? Yes. I stood in my bridal gown and didn't move. My heart swelled up and then it stopped. I stopped it so I could be with Gully Reed. It was a bad time to die. Such a bad time when living could be so good. Mr. McHale. Yes, Tom. You heard what she said. Every word, every uncanny word. And did you also see her? Yes, like like a white mist and long flowing hair and no flesh that I could see. I do have your hallucinations, Tom. I'm distressed to hear that. You the best mind in San Ventura. I say only what I saw. What was it that Billy promised you? Another wreck of the 1155. Gully would once more ride the van into the hollow of Jericho Bend. In the morning, Mr. McHale put his hallucinations to rest. McHale was such a man. Things had to make sense to him. I ordered an arrest, Tom. The arrest of your stepson, Will. You arrested Will? I'm sure he's behind this and others in with him. Looting graves and dressing up the masquerade as ghosts. Why would Will go against me? To drive you into the madhouse. Even to drive you to your death. I can't believe it. I know it's a great shock to you, but the boy hates you, Tom. Why does he? Well, unbalanced as you've been these ten years, an unsteady, brooding man. Will's mother died to shut her eyes to you, Tom. She couldn't stand any more of a life with you. The boy thinks this. You're saying that Will blames me for Margaret? For his mother's passing? Yes, and there's your house and land. With you gone, it'll pass to him. There's a profit in hate for Will. I've reasoned it out. Now, let's see what the ghosts will do. There was a message that night. That last anniversary night. Ten years to the day of the old wreck. It said, look to the rail at Jericho Bend. This time I would. There would be no negligence this time. I saw what I hadn't seen ten years before. The rails. The rails were split. Once again, the rails were split. Stop the train. I had to stop the train. This time I knew to stop the train. My signal lantern. I waved it. Waved it high in the air so Gully could see it. High, high. Stop! Stop in the name of mercy! I'd won this time. I'd stopped the train. I'd won! I awoke from a long sleep in the outdoors with someone standing over me. Mr. McHale. Yes, it's me. Did I faint? Died, I thought, these last ten minutes, Tom. Hardly a pulse to you, hardly a breath. Like your heart had stopped. Stopped? The 1155, Mr. McHale. The 1155. 1155 came and went. Came and went? You signaled it to stop, and it stopped. It's gone now. The train can't wait on an hallucinating old man. But the rail at Jericho Bend, it was split. I saw that with my own eyes. The train took the bend with nothing wrong. But I saw it. Come, I'll show you. Here at the bend, come see. Well, I'm here, Tom, waiting to be shown. No, oh, the rail is fine now. What I saw, I didn't see. Except in your mind. Yes, in my mind. And what I see now, only I see. No? Now what? Even now, I see things the devil directs me to see. I see things invisible to you. What do you think you see now? In the ground there in the hollow, if you have eyes for the dark, Mr. McHale, I see a body, a lonely body in the night. (laughs) But you don't see the dead, Mr. McHale. It's only for me to see. No. We see the same things again, Tom. A dead man. You see a dead man, too? A dead man, yes. It's Gully Reeves, dead where he died before. No, Tom, not Gully. We've a strange corpse in this one. A man who died tonight. Tonight? Blood soaked in his clothes and in the dirt. See? And still bleeding. The old dead don't bleed, Tom. And the old dead don't wear police handcuffs. Police handcuffs, you say? See, on his wrists. And a bullet hole in his head. See? 
This one was shot to death. I'll telephone the coroner to come for the murdered man. Oh, operator. Mr. McHale, wait. Wait with the telephone. It's Gully on the wireless again. Oh, Gully, is it? Let's not go through that again. I'll take the message, Tom. What is the message, Mr. McHale? An awakening. I'm beginning to understand things. And I owe your stepson, Will, an apology. An apology to Will? Yes, the looting of the graves and all that dressing up to make you see ghosts. It wasn't Will's doing. His scheme against you, as I'd reasoned. Will had nothing to do with it. I was wrong there, dead wrong. The message told you that? No, but I know that now. I put it all together. It was a message from a detective who was on the 1155 tonight. He lost a prisoner he was escorting to the state penitentiary. Chip Stavago, a convicted man. The message says we're to look for a short man, bald, wearing a dark suit and handcuffs. Handcuffs? That's the murdered man out there. Now listen carefully, Tom. This pair, Floyd Maxson and his girl Sally... They had worked up a scheme to board the 1155 and seize a prisoner being taken to the state pen. One Chips DeVago. Uh, they were out to seize DeVago from under the nose of the detective accompanying him. Seize DeVago and murder him. Which they did. Now, is it clear so far? Clear. All right. San Ventura was the place they picked to stop the 1155, climb aboard, and snatch DeVago. You were to stop the train for them, Tom. That's how your hallucinations came about. And the killers, Maxon and his girl Sally, were the source of your hallucinations. Now, they obviously knew about you. How you felt about that wreck of ten years ago. How it preyed on your mind. Your sense of personal guilt about it. How they worked on you all this anniversary week when you were most susceptible. They played on your imagination. Made you hear voices, see ghosts, all to get you to stop that train tonight. Mr. McHale. Yes, Tom? That story you were telling me about people scheming against my sanity. I'm asking you to tell it to me again. Sure, but not tonight, Tom. Your mind's been burdened enough for one night. Tomorrow, when the anniversary week is over and Gully Reeves isn't in your thoughts... Tomorrow, Tom, we'll go over the whole thing again tomorrow. Suspense. You've been listening to The Lunatic Hour, starring George Matthews, and written especially for Suspense by John Robert. Suspense is produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in tonight's story were Les Damon, Donald Buca, Rosemary Rice, and Dick Keith. Listen again next week when we bring you With Murder in Mind, written by Irwin Lewis. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense.